Hi everyone. I just want to make this short recording on the design moderation of grading an asynchronous discussion design assignment. This is an, ass an assignment type that I think is much more powerful than people realize. It's quite old from the 1990s, but I think uh, we don't consider it as much as we can, and I'd like to give this quick presentation on it. Okay, so what is asynchronous discussion? Well, it's essentially online discussion where the contrib contributions are done by typing and people are not simultaneously online. Now, this is like a discussion on Facebook or anything like that. People don't have to be online at the same time. And this can be done in a virtual learning environment or a learning management system in a discussion forum or a discussion area. Okay, why would you use asynchronous discussion? Well, I like to think of it maybe to compare it, say, to an essay. You might give students some materials. You might do a lecture with them. You might give them some reading, okay? And they may misinterpret those reading materials. If you gave them an essay, they could do the whole essay and still not quite get the point. So when they're in a discussion with other people, they're likely to get a broader view of the topic. They will see differing viewpoints. They may be exposed to more, more sources that other people have found. And maybe other people may have experiences that they can bring to bear on this. So I would say it's more stimulating an essay in that way. It's more immediate. I think it will give them a deeper understanding because they have to, well, they have to be reasoned in their contributions and quite succinct, uh, and they have to respond to other people's contributions. So that brings out more reasoning. I also think that an asynchronous discussion is less stressful because making those small contributions uh, is it's more immediate you have to do it now you will be less perfectionist you will get it done uh, and it's probably put well be less perfectionist about how you would go about an essay it also removes procrastination as well as you've got to be online uh, within the few days that other people are making contributions so you're more likely to just get in there and get it done okay now how to build one or design we'll say well the first thing is to design define a discussion topic okay now this would be a question with no clear answer if there's a clear answer it's really not that useful to you because everybody will make the same contribution if they know what it is okay now this may be based on a lecture you've given them or on some reading that you've given them to do or maybe you've given them uh, pointed them to some other video or a website or something like that so based on some content we'll say now it shouldn't be too broad the question okay or the discussion go in all sorts of directions okay Okay, now when you have a discussion online, a discussion like this, the group size is important. Of course, if it's too small, there's a, not really enough contributions to make it an interesting discussion. And if it's too large, there are far too many contributions and the student will be overwhelmed and you'll be quite overwhelmed with the grading as well. Okay, so I'm suggesting maybe about four to six if you put students in a compulsory discussion. By the way, I use the word compulsory here. Uh, because you may have uh, discussions in your course that are not compulsory and you'll find that if you have just a small number of that there's not enough you don't get a critical mass uh, of contributions you need much bigger groups but for a compulsory graded assignment i would say four to six okay um the timing of the contributions is important you're going to have to specify that it's, you just can't say here guys discuss this okay you'll have to say well, for starters, they need to respond to each other. And that's the reason that the timing is. There's no point in some being on at one time and some being on at a different... Well, some being on for these two days and other people not being on for these two days. They have to be involved in the same period of time. Okay, so set a deadline for the initial contribution. Everybody has to contribute before this date. Okay, set then for a time period after that date for the interactions where they have to respond to others. Just tell them that they have a minimum number of contributions. OK, and possibly, if you want it, maybe a final summary. Now, the reason I say a final summary that might be submitted like a, uh, I suppose, like a little essay in a way, is that I feel that that may make it easier for the lecturer to grade. But we'll have, there are other ways to do this as well. OK, now you would have to give them guidelines for their contributions, for starters, uh, how to be concise. Don't be writing too much. Uh, Online etiquette or behavior, not to be rude. There are certain rules. How to critique others without being rude, you know. 
how to politely disagree, uh, that their contributions should be evidence-based, that this is not just their opinion. Or if it's their opinion, it's their opinion based on evidence that they have seen somewhere. For instance, the reading assignment or further research that they may have done. You could tell them about the marking scheme. In fact, it was probably very useful to tell them about the marking scheme or rubric that you're going to grade it under. When they're contributing, to what extent should you be in there moderating that discussion, keeping an eye on that discussion? I would say that you possibly should avoid contributing. Remember, it's their discussion. That's what you're going to agree them on. But there may be reasons to contribute, uh, to encourage them. You know, that was a very interesting contribution uh, to maybe... If you think maybe they're missing a certain point and maybe that's your fault because of the materials you provide to them weren't broad enough or and you can say has anyone considered this idea and see what the reactions are there okay you may want them to stop the discussion wandering off track if it gets into another area and students get uh, distracted into that that's not what we're asking okay and of course catching bad behavior that's a a very important reason for keeping an eye on these discussions. Okay, um, what about grading the discussion? Well, for starters, it is probably helpful to have a marking scheme, a rubric. These are the criteria under which you're going to grade it and how you're going to award different levels of grade for each criteria. Tell them about how you're going to do that. Volume of contributions may be part of the rubric. And it's not that you want plenty of contributions. It's there's a certain a volume that you might be your target volume your optimum volume if they go over that you may mark them down or if they're under that you may mark them down the quality of their contributions or the reasoning behind it uh, their use of evidence that might be a rubric uh, particularly in reference to the reading materials you've provided them but possibly other sources as well you've got to worry about there are you giving them too much work by sending them to other sources as well um, you might consider peer assessment, in other words, getting them to grade each other. It's much more powerful and it's much more doable than you'd imagine. And I have another YouTube video on that there if you would like to look at that. Okay, here's another grading methodology. Now, I, the way I would have said to do this is possibly get a big sheet of paper, put the names of students on it and leave gaps between the names of students. As you go through the what is a more a chronological uh, discussion from the start will say different students are contributing at different times so it can get quite confusing but you have the student's name a student makes a contribution you might write a little note on the paper uh, a comment uh, and then another student contributes you go to their name and you might write a comment on that you could do this in Microsoft Word as well if you liked uh, and then you go through the whole discussion and you've got those various comments then you can look at any one particular student and from the comments that you've written and by the way these could be ones that you could feed back to the students as well um, you would then maybe to some extent uh, subjectively grade under the headings of the rubric the skills how are you going to build this what do you need to be able to do you need to be able to set up a discussion area in your virtual learning environment or your learning management system you need to be able to break them into groups okay you need to provide them with guidance okay so that notes must be prepared for the guidance about contributing the dates and things like that you need to monitor before their their contributions that means you need to be able to be able to find the discussion and have a glance over it from time to time uh, you may cr create a separate dropbox if you want them to do a summary okay and then you've got to grade it okay and that's it thank you very much for listening i hope this is helpful to you bye now